compensation time, overtime, time off in your, whatever you want to call it, it's all about giving back to those employees who go the extra mile. And while many companies choose to compensate overtime in the form of pay, there are others who would much rather prefer compensating in the form of paid time off. Now I know what you're thinking, doing such a thing and trying to manage such a policy is giving me such a headache, but that's where Vacation Tracker comes in. Using our toil feature, compensating overtime hours is fully automated and super simple, allowing you to meet your business needs and recognize employee efforts at no additional cost. Hey, it's David from Vacation Tracker here, and in today's video tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how you can set up and use the time walk in your feature that we currently offer. Now, just a quick note before we begin, this feature is currently only available for complete plan users. So if you're on the core plan and you're interested in using this feature, you will need to upgrade. Now that's been said, we can dive right in. So first things first, as usual, you're gonna to wanna to log in to your Vacation Tracker account and we're gonna to navigate to the left-hand menu. There are two ways we can go about this. And the one that you choose is really going to depend on how you currently have your policy set up within Vacation Tracker. Option one would be to actually create a new leaf type by going to leaf types here and clicking on create and having this leaf type be used to solely manage your time off and year policy. The alternative to this option would be to actually update an existing leaf type by going to locations and then having that one be changed to enable time off and year. As most commonly, a lot of companies have one PTO policy or leave type. I'm going to use that example, but just note that the steps that I'm doing are the same regardless if you set up a new leave type or modify an existing one. Since we're going to be modifying an existing leave type, we'll actually first need to head to locations by clicking on the button in the left hand menu. Because it is here where we'll need to specify which location's leave type we're actually modifying. In today's example, I'm just going to use Canada. Once we're inside the location, we can navigate to the Leave Policies tab and it's here we can make specific edits as needed. All we need to do is just click on the icon to the right. For the sake of argument, I'm just going to say that our Leave Policy all defaults under the PTO. So if I want to add a toil policy to my PTO, I'm going to click on the Edit button for this one. Now that we're inside the Leave type, it is here where we can choose to enable the Time Off in your feature. And to do so, it's as simple as going to the time off in your section and checking yes. Now, once you do so, as you just saw, a few more fields will appear, but don't you worry, I'm going to walk you through each one so you have a proper understanding. The first section that we have is the shortest toil duration that can be requested. Now, this essentially should reflect the minimum amount of overtime that an employee can log at your company. So when you open the drop down, you do have a few options to pick from. I'm going to go with one hour because I feel typically most companies will allow hourly overtime, but again, do pick this based on your needs. Next, you get to decide on who can make the requests for toil. Is it just admin and approvers or do you want to allow all employees slash users at your company to make such a request? Typically, I would imagine that you're going to want to leave this as admins and approvers as you'll want a manager or someone of that level to approve such a request that an employee makes. But if you feel comfortable leaving all your employees making that request, you can just allow all users. Lastly, you just need to decide on whether these uh, hours or days expire. If you do want them to expire, you can just hit yes here and then choose after how long they will expire. I'm going to leave no as a default and we're going to move forward. Now that we're done with all the options, we just got to click on update. And once it loads, you'll see that the policy has now been updated to reflect the time off and year inclusion. Now that the policy is active, let's say we have an employee who works some overtime and we would like to compensate them in the form of time off. To do so, all we need to do is now head to leave requests in the left hand menu and you'll see once you open it up, there is a section to request toil. Here you'll select that particular employee who worked the overtime hours and choose the corresponding leave type that has toil enabled. So in this case, for us, it was PTO. Next, we just need to choose the amount of overtime that they had worked or logged. So let's say as an example, they worked on a weekend. So we wanna add a full day. Now we note that in with the specific reason, worked on weekend. 
and it's as simple as clicking add toil to have that added to the user's balance once this is completed. As a side note, if you prefer using our Microsoft Teams or Slack bots to manage your leave, you can also add toil by using the command request toil. So now when an employee goes to their profile page on Vacation Tracker to check their leave balances, if they go to the specific leave type that has toil enabled, when they go to quota and hover over the tooltip, you'll actually see the breakdown which includes the overtime compensation we just gave. And if you decide to go with option one to create an entirely new leave type, that'll also appear here where they can click on that and again use quota to see the breakdown. If ever you need to delete the toil request that you have entered, you just need to navigate to that specific employee who the request is for, which we are on right now, head to the leave section at the top here, and you'll have the option to delete that toil request. And now overtime work can be turned into well-deserved time off. Thanks again for watching this video. I do hope you find it helpful and informative. But as always, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave it right down below and we will get back to you as soon as possible. In addition to this video tutorial, we do have a few help desk articles on this topic. So do be sure to check those out if you prefer learning about toil that way. That's going to be all for me this video. Happy vacationing.